Welcome back, everyone, for a decision right away. We know what's happening with Devin. He's trapped in this body of the demon after doing so well in killing the Aberith. He did that and, well, we thought we would be the better ones to actually, you know, get him out of that body. It turns out we can't do it, chat. We can't do it. We, uh, we turn out to be not as competent as we thought we were going to be. So we have to decide whether or not we're going to go to the chapel to find help or go to the magic shop. It looks like most of you are saying go to the chapel because we did meet the proprietor of the magic shop once and she was a nasty customer. So, looks like that you were saying we're going with number one, go to the chapel to find help. It takes some convincing to get Devin to go near the chapel. However, you've finally gotten up the steps. Standing before the wooden double doors, you pound on them with your fists, then pull again and look at the locked handles. From behind the doors, a voice snarls. The chap- um, I guess that sounds like a snarling voice. The chapel is closed! What don't you understand about a locked door? You frown. I'm going to have my demon- f no, that's, that's not the voice at all. I I'm going to have my demon friend break down your doors if you don't open them, you shout. We need help. A demon? The voice roars. Instantly, the doors are thrown wide. The campus reverend is dressed in a minister's black robes with a white stole around his neck. His bald head shines in the afternoon sunlight. A thick, brown beard covers his entire jaw, making him look more like a lumberjack than a pastor. His eyes narrow as he stares at Devon's borrowed form. <laughs> this is no ordinary beast, he says. Who are you? I'm playing video games, and this is Devon, you say, except he's trapped in the Skrelling's body. And I'm a Reverend Booker, the man responds. Then the Reverend rubs both hands over his face. <sighs> what is it about you children, always coming to me when you need help? He lowers his hands, staring at you. What do I get in exchange for helping your friend? <laughs> Excuse me? You say, narrowing your eyes. <laughs> You've obviously gotten into a situation you can't handle. All in my assistance, but for price. What kind of priest are you? You almost shout. Aren't you supposed to help out of the kindness of your heart? You hear Devin growl behind you. I'm no Catholic child, therefore I'm not a priest. And you do know what kind of salary they pay me. <laughs> of course, I need compensation for helping you. If you have nothing of value, he trails off, starting to slam the church doors. No, you say. Digging into your backpack, you present the pastor with the heavy, dark tone. We're going to give the priest the Necronomicon? I have this. <clears throat> I have this. It has to be worth something. Booker takes the tome. Ah, yes, it is. This is black magic, what you've been playing with. Don't you know any better? No, <laughs> obviously you don't. He says, answering his own question. Wait here, in the foyer. The pastor bustles off. You and Devin stand on the threshold of the chapel for a few minutes before Booker comes back, holding a small round glass bottle. The liquid inside is tinted purple. What is that? You ask. The reverend scowls at you. The remedy for what ails your friend, obviously. Did you not come here for my aid? Well, here it is. In exchange for this spell tome, of course. Yes, of course, you say. Now just hand over that cure. Booker approaches Devin, uncorking the glass bottle. <laughs> Open up, he says. Devin obliges him, opening his mouth. Booker tilts the contents of the bottle into Devin's demon mouth, then says, Swallow it! Quickly! As soon as Devin drinks the strange potion, he flops onto his side, wreathing on the church stoop, howling in agony. What did you do to him? You cry, rushing forward. Booker steps back, extending one arm and catching you, holding you back. You struggle against his crushing grip. But as you watch, the demon form of the Grelling starts to shift. It looks like something is trying to get out of the body. You see what looks like the outline of a hand pushing from inside the Grelling. Just as a... Just, I don't know, continuity issue. Devin's body is back at the library, isn't it? I, is he growing? I guess he's growing a new body to come out of the Grelling. I notice some of you are saying, or this is reminding you of 90s Saturday morning cartoons voice acting. That is where I get most of my inspiration, yes. 
Then you see two human hands burst through the grilling skin. You have to turn aside as Devon emerges, worried that you'll see a bunch of guts spilling out onto the concrete steps. However, when you turn back, Devon is not covered in blood. It's as he emerged from an empty shell. The grilling skin lies flat, like a deflated balloon, or a discarded Halloween costume. Uh, that was disgusting, Devon yells. Booker shrugs, then hurries over to the grilling skin, bundling up like used laundry. He was the easiest way. He turns, nodding to you both, the grilling wadded up in his arms. <laughs> I'll be taking the book in this, he says, nodding to the grilling skin. <laughs> Knock yourself out, Devon says. And thanks, I guess. The pastor rushes back into the church, slamming the doors behind him. I don't think he's really a reverend. You say, turning back to Devin. Mm, I could care less. He got me out of that thing. And, he says, smiling at you, I believe I remember about you saying something about a kiss. <laughs> I suppose, since you're not a demon anymore. You answer him, winding your arms around his neck. You spend some time leisurely making out on the front steps of the chapel. Mmm, sacrilegious. After you both come up for air, Devin inhales deeply. Hey, he says, my asthma! It feels like it's gone! Alright, so not, not only is Devin saved, but he has a new and improved body. That's a handy side effect of becoming a demon, then, you tell him. If it means that I can kiss you without you running out of breath. <laughs> it means I can do a lot more without running out of breath, he tells you, raising an eyebrow. Uh, like fuck it. You pull him in for another kiss, grinning. I told you! You breathe against his lips. I'm not that easy. The end. Wow, well chat, we finally made it to the end without dying, and we have a hex boyfriend. So I wonder, is that the true ending? Did we actually complete it? Hmm. Hold on a second. And, uh... Just let's turn that off, since that is just so really loud. Okay. Uh... This is appropriate music for looking at the achievements. What kind of achievements does this game have? There are plenty that we don't have. Did it in the grave? Yeah, remember that. Like a rock. We romance Theo... Let me look once. Uh... Oh, right, the mysterious tooth that we never actually used for anything. You know, I just noticed that we did not actually get an achievement for getting that ending. We got an ending for Devin, but that was far be uh, before we got that ending. Okay, we became a grill. Why didn't we get an achievement for that? We did that. And uh, hmm, onions, you say? Muscle-bound beast to do your bidding? Oh, Enchanted Sword. That sounds like a true ending. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, I guess we also have the option of doing a little breaking and entering into the church. <laughs> we found that you don't need a man after all. You joined a secret club, you say? That's... hmm, interesting. <laughs> okay, so... Okay, so we can have we can have our potential boyfriends killed off and still get an ending, it seems. Hmm. Uh, I think we'll have to think about this. We did get an ending, we did get a hex boyfriend, and we did survive, but it, there was a lot more in the end to the story of vampire boyfriends, so I'm a bit curious to know if there is a bit more story, a bit more plot with hex boyfriends if there is a true ending. And I feel that if it's like the first game, there probably is. There probably is. We don't need to get all the achievements, but I do think that... I don't think the plot's done. I think there's more to go. That's just my feeling. All right. So, okay, that was actually a very short part. But, uh, congratulations. Could we go round one more time? <laughs> I think that's enough for Hex Boyfriends for this week. So let's listen to the ending theme of House of the Dead 2 as we ponder our, our Hex Boyfriend, our Magical Boyfriend, that we actually survived with, that we actually made it to the end of the game. And uh, he lost his asthma. 
he was regenerated in an improved body. Does that mean that they can go back to the school, the uh, the building, and get Devin's old body? That seems like that might be a little weird. What would you do with that, do you think, if you were still alive and you also had a dead body of yourself? I imagine there could be some uses. Not talking about what you're thinking about, filthy chat. But I do think...